Hi, welcome to the review for round two. I'm creating this video to give you a little bit more motivation to do the best you can for round three. And in this video, I'm going to review the results for round two. And then I'm going to give you, for the last time, a review of how you should complete your round three to stay competitive. Now, as look at the results for round two, we see that... Um, Michael is in first place with 871 points, which is you know phenomenal for round two. Anything above, remember what you need as a total. So whatever points remain, just kind of figure that's the amount of points you need to earn each round. Uh, for each round, most teams make between four and 500 points as average. Uh, the first round is the easiest round to make points, but now that you're competing against yourself moving forward and your teammates, it gets a little bit harder. But most students did, did incredible in fact no one lost points some students here who are below 100 points some common mistakes these students who are below 100 points after round two are one they're not watching my videos my videos are very step by step here's how you do it exactly what to input in the cells so even if you did nothing but follow my videos you would have scored much better two you're not reading the student user guide Three, you're not playing individual practice rounds to get better at the simulation. So it's like a game of basketball or baseball. You have to do some practice if you want to get better. If you're already good, you don't have to practice, I guess. But if you're not doing well, use those practice rounds to help. Now, profit margins are key. You have to get your profit margins up every round. Just like in the real world, investors are expecting your profit margins to keep increasing, your profits to keep increasing, your sales to keep increasing. So if you don't get this done, you're going to have some unexpected problems. So if you're if you're below 41 and you're entering round three, you really haven't done much for your investors. So you have to really uh, get those profit margins back up. And that will ha help your stock prices and that will help your return on an, uh, uh, equity, your total points will improve, your operating profit margins, so everything will improve upon that. So if we look at uh, overall, let's look at the uh, points here per round. Okay, so we see here that for net profit, points have gone up. Uh, I mean, profits have gone up greatly for a lot of companies. So now the total companies are reaching Prime Autos are reaching $81 million in profits. Uh, Kraft here is $76 million. Uh, Febreze, $75. Dylan, $77. Sasha, $76. H Motors, $75. Uh, so anybody over $60 million in net profits is doing well. If you look at total points per team, we'll see here. <clears throat> now, this team, Michael was number one in this round. He was last place in last round, probably just corrected. He probably read the user guide, watched my videos, and figured out, okay, this is how you play. Maybe he ran some practice rounds, but he really turned his points around, which is great about this game is that if you do poorly in one round, since year-over-year -year comparisons, you can pick up and, and pull together those points you lost in the previous round. So Michael did a good job of course correcting. So if you ever have a weak round where you didn't really make that many points, if you if you Follow the videos I've been sending. You read the user guide, play a few practice rounds. You'll get how this game works. It's very simple. It's very close to how real business works. And you'll turn around those points and you'll please your investors. Now, stock price, we've had uh, the same leader in stock price, uh, Jax. And, but we have two, it looks like we have two, a, num a new number two, Sasha, and a new number three, Dylan. And that corresponds with the fact that they increased their uh, profits a great deal and they moved up. But everybody increased their stock price, which is good. Uh, sales. Okay, so we have a new sales leader. Bernard has, is number one in sales. Now, the key thing here is you're number one in sales, but you want to be number one in profits too. So you have to make sure that you increase your sales prices, uh, that you're making for each car you're selling you're making decent profits because it's not a sales game We're not trying to be number one in sales, which is not bad But what we want is number one in profits to maximize shareholders wealth because that is the theme of finance And that is the theme of this textbook is how to maximize shareholders wealth uh, new number two place is uh, Sophie in sales and a new number three is Kadar motor so 
you're doing great on sales just make sure your profit margins are going up otherwise investors will be disappointed so earnings per share a new number one in earnings per share sasha followed by last week's leader and then dylan so these are the top three earnings per share and these are the teams that have very high profit margins and h bonus and craft and rachel are also doing well in this area and a lot of teams picked up greatly in their earnings per share some teams are flat only one team went down so that they disappointed that's a disappointment to investors for sure okay so let me show you if you remember where i left off i left off and i'm doing a practice game just to kind of show you uh, what you could do in a team competition to perform better so number one is to complete the round there were a few students who i had to uh, push forward and, and they didn't complete the round they didn't work on their round two so that's a, a wasted opportunity and you've lost points for doing that so be careful of that don't miss a round uh, number two, make sure you review your overview points. So if you're looking from year one to two, it's a year over year comparison. So my revenues went up 40%, I made 40 points. My quick ratio uh, went up 40%, I made 40 points. My debt ratio went down, and now we want debts to go down. So if the debt ratio goes down, you actually make points. Uh, profit margins went up 9%, 10%, 11% on the net. Uh, my... Return on equity and return on investment were lower because I didn't uh, I didn't really create I created more equity than I did uh, profits. Uh, it's not necessarily a bad thing, but the return on that equity it's harder to make a big return on equity the more equity you develop. Uh, my earnings per share went up fifty five percent my market capitalization and all these most of, of not all of these are being covered in chapter three so you should understand what these are better by listening to the lecture for chapter three doing the homework for chapter three our book value per share and it's also explained in the student user guide which is always at the bottom the student manual of each page uh, my my forecasts were more accurate so i had a total of um 500 points i had a uh, my operational investments were over 100%, and my cash surplus was positive, so I earned 100 points there. So after I review my overview points, I should check out my assessment. My revenues, what they're only three out of five stars, so average. What can I do to improve? It's saying, uh, look at the market versus potential chart. To, you know, And so it gives me some ideas on some of the things I do, didn't do well on how to. So it says to go to the performance chart and look at, my uh, market potential versus actual sales and this is this should help me to understand what I did so by reviewing these charts gives you a better graphical view of how you did you can also check out the industry to see um, it, it relists all of the your just your choices and how you built your car and just a quick uh, review of your total points and what's good about the industry in the team competition, you can go and see other team members and see for number one company, what did they do? Where am I different on my potential, on my units, on how I built the car? So this is where you do your research to look at your competitors and see, get some ideas on how your competitors are performing to improve your game. Just like you do in the real world. Uh, when GM and Ford were not doing well, they went over to Japan and they saw, they looked at what Honda and Toyota were doing. They actually toured their factories. They looked at their sales numbers. They looked at how they, built, how they built their cars. They looked at, you know, a lot of things about their competitors. And then they started to improve their level of competition based on how the competitors were performing. So you should do the same. Okay, then our financials are completely backed up. We learned in Chapter 3 about the income statement and the balance sheets. You should understand them better. And we go back to now we're in Round 3 and we have to make our decisions. So in Round 3 here, I'm going to look at... Uh, I'm going to see what my decisions were for round two. That's my baseline. I'm going to see the customer ex expectation range have increased. So the customers are expecting more. Now, the cars are like iPhones. Every year, a new model comes out. Every year, customers want to know what's new about this. Why should I buy it? What's new? Is it better camera, better memory, You know, more features, better operating system? So same thing with cars. When, if a consumer 
you know, most people don't buy new cars every year. Like most people don't buy new iPhones every year, but they still like to keep up with, with what's new because in two or three years, you might be buying a new car. So you want to know how is the fuel economy or engine or safety features improved, luxury features, the reliability, which is the months of warranty. So these are things that customers are going to want to know and Car companies have to keep improving their product, just like cell phone companies have to keep improving their cell phones. That's why today's cars look so much better and can do so much more than cars in the past. So I see that expectation ranges have increased. The importance factors always stay the same. So when I'm building this car, I want to uh, try to build a car that will be acceptable uh, to consumers who are expecting more. So I'm trying to build a better car and have better uh overall features than last year now the price they do allow for the price does go up a little bit just like real world prices do increase and as long as i'm getting a five percent gross profit margin push i'm happy now when it comes to the sales forecast you have to go to the student manual where's student manual at the bottom of every web every screen so you go to the student manual and you want to look at uh, page four, where they give you an explanation of the growth of the vehicles, the forecasting of the sales, and a chart that this is the average sales companies are expected to sell. So if you believe your car is better, forecast higher. If you believe your car is not as good, forecast lower. I think my car is not as good because I have a higher price and my features aren't the best, so I'm going to forecast lower. Okay, sedan. Same thing with sedan. I want to give a better... I want to make a better car for my consumers. Uh, sometimes you get these warnings if you don't have enough, um, if you don't put in, meet the base minimum requirements. Okay, so moving forward. Uh, I did get up about 4%. I'm going to try and tweak that to 5%. Okay, good. I don't think my car is as good as other cars, so I am going to forecast lower just to be on the safe side. Okay. So I'm going to try and improve my statistics here. And okay, so I was able to get up three percentage points. Uh, I think that's the best I could do without really sacrificing the vehicle. So sometimes I'm going to have to make some more operational investments here to, to help get this profit margin up. It's just, it's hard to be able to do better for um, the design of the vehicle for my customers and also keep up with, you know, the, you know, the, the, the market and make these better profit margins. It's just very difficult here. So maybe I'll have to pull back on a couple of the lower end variables. Yeah, this is the lowest I can go on this, unfortunately. So again, I'm not, I'm disappointing on the gross profits here because it is hard to really get the car where I needed to be, so I could do 3%. Again, I'm disappointed with that, so I'm going to need more operational investments. So I'm going to move into marketing. Now, marketing is takes a lot longer to do because, again, <clears throat> i got to check out the user manual. These percentages don't change, but i got to figure out how to input, you know, uh, convert these to dollar amounts. And I see that the dollar amounts have increased. So um, when I put my, you know, if I say 5%, Newspapers, you know, maybe that translates to a um, hundred million, a hundred thousand. So I gotta, it's gonna take me some time to do this. Some cars, it's more important than other. The advertising component to the sales, like trucks, are very high percentage. Uh, I think probably also luxury. Uh, so it takes some time to do this, but I just want to make sure that I'm keeping within this range. I'm not doling too much above it or too much below it because this is where most of the competitors will move. And you see every every round, this gets higher and higher as the market gets bigger and bigger. Companies spend more and more in advertising. Okay, I'll see you in the production page. Okay, I'm in production and I see um, that I don't need to have to build a production plant for the economy class. I have a capacity of 3,000. <clears throat> Actually, I do because I need to build 3185. So this is sort of 
uh, pain, folks, and spending ten thousand, ten million dollars just to make 185 cars. Um, and I'm going to move up my operational investments here. Now I'm going to have to do the same. That's my one production plan to get me to four four thousand, so I can make my four thousand cars. Um, if I if I was only making 3,000, I wouldn't have to buy a production plant. But as the market is growing so fast, sometimes you can't avoid having to get these production plants. I'm going to, I'm going to buy some more operational investments here. Okay, it looks like it's going to be production plants all around. And I know that I need to step up my operational investments here. Again, another production plant for... Okay, I'm going to submit my production data and move into finance. And hopefully, <clears throat> even with all that spending, I have some sort of surplus where I don't have to really borrow a lot of money. We'll see here. So go to the bottom. Good, I have a surplus. So I'm going to go up. And I'm going <clears> to <throat> pay back some debt. Because it helps me with my variables. <clears throat> buy back some stock all right and I'm going to complete the round <clears throat> so again excuse me so again I am in the practice rounds you are in the team competition round so you're not going to get instant results like this I'm just using this as a chance to, to give you ideas of how to better complete your round three so you remain competitive and you make your points and if you haven't do, been doing as well as you like to this will help hopefully this will help you so now uh, your round is due I can see your round is due on January 12th so you have time uh, and then once you complete that round make sure uh, I have to process it first, so everybody, I have to wait for everybody to complete, and then I process. Uh, and then once it's processed, you can go and see your results. And hopefully, uh, let's see how I did. I had 455 points, which I'm very happy with. That's going to, you know, it's keeping me on target. <clears throat> and I see that I did improve my profit margins. My total asset turnover declined because I bought all those production plants. And a lot of those production plants I bought and only made a couple hundred cars with so I didn't really utilize those assets to the full amount I could have so if I bought those production plants and made a thousand cars new thousand cars with each plant my return on assets my total asset turnover would have been better because it's looking at sales generated so I really didn't generate as much sales with my assets as it did last round because I made huge investments in my assets so that's okay you can't be you can't make a huge amount every round on every variable and that also affected my return on assets because I have a lot more assets so compared to my profits the return wasn't improved but that's going to change in future rounds as I start utilizing these assets more and I start generating more and more returns okay and my forecasting was a little bit lower so uh, but I still managed to squeak out a surplus matter I was going in with you know tw in maybe 20 million in surplus but because I, my forecasts weren't as good. I lost some of those profits, but I still managed to squeak out a surplus because I had a big enough surplus going into the end of the round. So if I see in production, I see that I did, I do have inventory that my cars weren't, you know, as loved as I thought they would be, which created some of that unsold profits, which created unsold, uh, unsold cars created some unmaterialized profits. So that's why you leave a big def, a surplus on your. Uh, financial statements just, just to cover that okay so i think i went over the round three and step-by-step -step details showing you how i would have done it so you have enough go enough to go complete your round three this is the last time though i'm going to run through this and give you the step-by-step spoon-fed information the next three rounds rounds uh well four, four, you have to complete round three which this will help you but Four, five, and six, you're on your own. You're not going to see a video where I show you exactly what to do. Because I think by, you know, 
doing this multiple times already, it's either it's it's you're watching and you're learning and you're doing it, or you're just not watching and making more videos is not going to help you because you're not watching anyway. So I hope this video you find it helpful and you continue to do well and you see the connection between the textbook and the simulation because the textbook is about corporate finance and this uh, simulation is actually utilizing those suggestions, making the investments, buying the assets, reviewing the results and see, using finance to see how you're doing in the simulation. Okay, well, uh, good luck in the next round and I'll be talking to you soon.